even though I have only this end of this stem wall is only gonna be two feet here for this garage door opening I like to run a board all the way part, um, from corner to corner to tie the whole thing all in together even though this little wing wall is only going to be two feet wide and we're going to have a 16 foot wide opening for the garage. Okay, Ryan is going to start using, he's got a little 2 by 10 over here. That 2 by 10 is a perfect little trick to gauge his inside stakes with. 2 by 10 is 9.5. He's going to whacker that thing in, you put a 2 by 4 board on there, and he ends up with a perfect 8 inch wide footing or excuse me, stem wall. Okay, so we're continuing around the perimeter of the foundation. Notice that when we come down here that we are staggering our seams. If you leave your seams above one another on these four boards, it's gonna be a weak spot. So we always stagger those, offset our, our ends on our boards. These two by eights will all be used again in the framing of the subfloor and maybe possibly the roof of the house. When it's all done, we have these uprights about every 30 to, oh, 36 inches. And you notice there's always a stake or two close to these joints right down here. Okay, so here we are. We've made it all the way around the front. That's the garage door opening. We've done the complete perimeter. We have most of our kickers in to hold everything nice and in line with where we want. Now we're going to start coming around doing all our inside forms. Going with the inside form. Again, this is going to be an 8 inch stem wall. Pretty standard for a two story house. At least here in California. So we'll go, since we've gone around the whole perimeter, we will now go around the inside here. Guess he's doubling that up. And that's the... Okay, so we've got all our forms up now. Jesse's coming around. He's gonna trim all these stakes off flush. It makes it really handy for rotting this concrete off. There's nothing in your way, or little, literally not whole much. And uh, he'll go around this whole foundation Cut it in flush, you can see how clean it is. We still have to throw some spreaders on there and kick it off so it's all lined and steady. Uh, but first we're gonna go through, put our rebar in. Brian's doing the last little bit of this stem wall right now. Okay, so Monday morning, had our inspection. We're ready to pour this thing. Josh is going around, getting everything wet getting the footings, all the lumber cleaned off. You know, we used to use form oil or diesel oil to put on the wood, keeps the concrete from sticking. The thing is, code does not like you, and i.e. building standards, does not like getting any oil on the rebar. So we are just using water nowadays and trying to avoid all that stuff. Anyway, it seems to work fine if you wet it down. I want to point something out here. I'm standing in what will be the garage. So we have two little wing walls on either side of a 16 foot opening. Let me show you a little trick that's gonna save you your garage door installer all kinds of grief. You notice on the inside right here, put a four by four spacer with a couple little things. So anyway, there's gonna be a little L-shaped notch there when the uh, Concrete's finished so the door can door and track can drop right down behind the slab because the slab's going to be lower than the stem wall here. Anyway, it's going to save the con the door guy having to get his little jackhammer out and crack a bunch of concrete off your brand new poured footing. You know, can't tell you how many times I've seen garage door guys have to do that so they can get their track to drop all the way to the bottom of the opening. So anyway, we're going to start pouring this thing. Okay, so we just pumped nine yards out. We go along and we top off our footings. So when the second pour comes along, we have a nice continuous pour and the bottoms down here are sealed off. 
so it doesn't blow through. Now and then you get a little blowout, but overall, so it's looking kind of ugly. There's a spot we're going to crawl through. So that's about it. That's one yard, nine yards. Nine yards pretty well topped all our footings off. Sure. Here the guys are going, just rough cleaning it up real quick. Come back with the trowels afterwards. Got little things to cut around here. Got Ross, Jesse, all my sons and son-in-laws on the job today. Come back tomorrow, strip all these forms here, we'll see how it came out. So while this concrete's still green, it's strong enough that nothing moves, Ross is coming around and getting rid of these stakes. Got to unscrew them and then pulling them out. So you see already over here, stakes are removed. Jesse's just going around doing a final cleanup. Should look great tomorrow. It's Tuesday morning. Poured yesterday, Monday. We'll go on this morning. Strip the forms, see how we did. Again, notice there's few, if anything, sticking up above our footing that we don't have to have. Obviously, our spreaders that keep everything from pulling apart. Ryan's coming through, taking the anchor bolt nuts off, the spreaders off. We'll get a clip here in a few minutes after we've stripped this form and see how we did see if we screwed up too bad probably not save i like to save all these wedges again they're 15 cents a piece another little trick here for my interior footings for my girders i like to use a precast 12 8 12 con uh, concrete block rather than forming out of wood. You know, they're four bucks a piece. The savings of labor, kind of nice. You don't have to form them, you don't have to strip them. So I wet set all these things. I get a nice string set up. And as I'm pouring, I pour the things full. I have a string set up, I drop them in place, put a little teeny level on the, on the um, anchors for my four by four post, it'll go to the girder. Anyway, pretty handy. Well, we're all stripped. We're ready to start plating, putting our girders in, and framing the floor. We'll come back here in a few minutes. We're gonna grade this dirt out, wet it up, run a plate across it, get it ready for some crushed rock, and ready to pour the garage slab. Came out good, no voids. Uh, Here's a little trick right here. I grab a piece of four inch ABS and I put it right through, or I'm gonna bring my plumbing through, a three inch, three inch rod will go right through, three inch uh, ABS will go right through that thing. Telling all my competition, all my tricks.